it's very interesting that the science behind heredity is changing immensely at the moment. It's changing in the following way. Until about 1956 or thereabouts, it was generally believed, and this is in general the folklore around today, that the, all members of a species had much the same genetics, except for a few that, that had mutations. And these mutations, differences of genes, were relatively rare. So most of the genes that most of the, the, the species had in common were what made them one species. Now, when Luontin started to measure, actually to look at the genetics of real organisms in the 1970s, he developed a way of doing this that didn't require breeding them. Breeding animals is enormously tedious to find out their genetics. What he did was to withdraw fluids and look at how many versions of different proteins there were. If there was one version, then you got the same gene from both parents. If there were two versions, then you got a different gene from your mother and your father. You can see that. Now, that was fine, except that he found that 10% of our genes were heterozygous. Heterozygous means you get a different version from your mother and your father. So 10% of the genes, 3,000 out of 30,000 genes, were different. They got different versions from mother and father. That meant, oh, it meant a hell of a lot. It meant that you couldn't do simple genetics anymore. It meant that organisms, well, what do we say? It meant that a lot of obvious things became very puzzling. Francis Darwin, the old man's great-grandson, came to our department. He worked in our department in Birmingham for a year. He looked exactly like the old man, the same ears, the same stub nose. He looked exactly like the old man. But he had only a sixteenth of the genes of the old man. Think about it, great-great-grandson. And um, yet he looked exactly like him. Now, that cannot be explained on simple ideas about genetics and what happens to genes. What we must remember is that genes are only 1% of the genome. The genes, the protein-specific bits of the genome, the bits that specify which proteins are made, are only 1% of the genome. In between is lots of stuff that used to be called junk DNA, but which we now know makes RNA which controls all of, the, all of the things that go on. The controlling stuff is the important bit. The genes themselves are much less important. For example, we're 1% different from chimpanzees in our genes, but we're only 50% different from a cabbage in our genes. So that the, um, it's the control of the genes, which gets turned on when, that's the important thing that turns you into a person and not a cabbage. And that is something we know very little about. We're finding out about it. it there's a, a, probably 100,000 papers a year on epigenetics. Now, perhaps 50,000, 100,000. It's, it's an enormously active field. But what that means is that it's impossible to say simple things about it. Come back in two years.